Welcome, welcome. Another day, another episode. No, another week, another episode. We are not a daily podcast yet, right, Sebastian? Almost, almost. almost. Now that we're editing, you are editing an episode <laughs> every week, every Thursday. Dear friends, dear listeners, don't forget, every Thursday you have a new episode of Two Debate Don't. Yeah, you make the promise and I have the work. That's wonderful. <laughs> well, you know, being head of state is all about entertainment, isn't it? Are we talking about head of state? Oh, no, you, that's not no, the debate today. Oh, what a good transition yeah. to another debate. Listeners, stay tuned. In the next few weeks, <laughs> we will talk about entertainment <laughs> and communication. But that's yes. not what we're going to talk to you about today. But as you can tell, dear listeners, Sebastian feels like a radio host right now because he's sitting in front of a microphone looking at me with a headset on, which is a very unusual setting. We are in the same room again. It happens again. In a lovely office in with a, no yeah, windows. In our lovely <laughs> office without windows, exactly. <laughs> it's and sunny outside. Today's debate is a bit, uh, well, on the heavier side, I would say. And the motion is... A Saudi dissident's death is more important than the death of 40 Yemeni children. So we're referring, of course, to the ongoing war in Yemen. So I'm trying to remember when it started, and I think it's such a confusing uh, war that most people around the planet, even those who, like us, read a lot, I, I can actually say quite a, a not can actually say not that much about the war in Yemen, because I think it started four years ago. And it's basically the Saudis just bombing parts of Yemen because some terrorists may or may not be hiding there. Well, well, kind of. So um, there is a there is a big and complex story behind all this. It's basically a replacement war with uh, Iran. So the Saudis ha fight a war in Yemen against the Houthis. And the Houthis are an ethnic group in Yemen, yeah. right? Which are considered terrorists by the Saudis and which seem to be trying to attack or send uh, i think they've managed to send two or three missiles into saudi arabia over the past few years they've landed in the desert because anyway saudi arabia is mostly desert yeah um so so yeah so basically the houthis if you will are a political force in yemen yemen used to be a very religious state and The original starting point wasn't actually that religious. The weird thing is the number of parties involved um, because the Saudis fight that war, but there are also many, many other parties on the ground, including parts of the West. So, for instance, the US um, keeps attacking um, places in Yemen um, allegedly to fight against ISIS rebels or uh, attack Al-Qaeda or what have you. So it, it is a very complex conflict. And the problem is the conflict seemed to be fought or the war seemed to be fought without any regard for civil death. Uh, for instance, a couple of weeks ago, a school bus with 40 children, and that's the one we refer to in the motion, uh, just got attacked. Many of the weapons being deployed are actually U.S. and Western weapons. So it's uh, the, the Saudis basically fight with an U.S. arsenal. And since the Saudis are not really well equipped to work with high-tech military equipment, it's often even Americans sitting on the controls. So it's uh, it's a bit of Local a... Local guiding where, where the weapons yeah. should drop. It's, it's a mess. It's a bloody war with a lot of debt. And still... It seemed to be that the news cycle in the past weeks were not dominated by the Yemen war. It was dominated by one particular death. Which one? And the death of the Saudi journalist who fled Saudi Arabia about a year ago and who became a U.S. resident. So that's Jamal Khashoggi. I think that's the way you pronounce it. Not too sure. Uh, and he was killed in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul just at the beginning of October. That was just a month ago uh, in, a, in a crazy... Uh, horrible way to say the least but if you look at pure numbers you could say it's just the, the death of one person when the saudis are killing dozens and hundreds of innocent lives uh, just as innocent lives in in yemen so that's why we came up with that motion of wondering well what is really more important is the death of one person even if that person is a dissident a journalist or is it the death of in this case children but it could be any Ye yemeni citizens to put a number on this and that number it will be abstract by the way in the, the war in Yemen, more than 50,000 children died so far. I do not even know Which that. is a crazy number. 130 a day right now. And it's a, it's a number that's... I'm, I don't know about you, but in German news, that number is ab absent. It's oh, like, It's not there. I, I don't even know. And I read... Uh, we talked about this before, but I read news like every day. I'm kind of addicted to it. 
read New York Times, The Guardian, and Le Monde. And I, I read a bit of everything, and I, I don't even know this. So this is the motion today. A Saudi dissident's death is more important than the death of the Yemeni children. The flip of the coin decided that I'm going to be against that motion, and you go first, whenever you're ready. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. The war in Yemen is a humanitarian disaster. It's a shameful war. Sadly, any number of deaths, any suffering human beings there are enduring is completely in vain. But they're in luck, if I may say so. The killing of one man, the Saudi journalist, may get them their, their deaths noticed. And I'll explain why in a few seconds. Cynically, people whom we don't know and who, or who live far away, we don't really care about. And again, I insist, this is being cynical. It may be sad, but it's, the, the, it's true. In this case, uh, the journalist, he was in Istanbul, which is geographically close uh, or part of Europe in the case of Istanbul. So it already feels closer to us. He went to consulate, something that we are all likely to do or very likely to do in our lifetime. And we want to be quite certain that we're not entering into a butcher shop uh, by mistake. More importantly, he was a resident of a Western country writing in one of the most well-known newspapers, the Washington Post. Cynically, the murder of a journalist, because he's a journalist, a critic of the Saudi regime, what's more, is more serious than a death of anonymous, unknown, innocent children. That's because through the journalist, the murder represents a fundamental attack on freedom of press or the freedom of expression. And the risk here is that we're going to put more weight on emotions, the death of children, innocent children. And instead, we're not going to talk about what's undermining our democracies, the fact that Saudi Arabia is trying to uh, shut, shut up the voice of a dissident. On numbers, any reporter who has covered uh, a disaster, humanitarian disaster, should understand what our dear comrade Stalin uh, is once reported to have said to a fellow Soviet official. He said the death of one person is a tragedy, but the death of one million is a statistic. And that's why news coverage of a famine or a flood will often highlight the story of one victim, because statistics just leave us cold. It's not because we want things one way that they are that way. And perhaps the death of those children is not completely in vain. The death of the dissident may act as a tipping point after years of accumulation of bad practices by the Saudi regime, which is not just the war in, in, in Yemen, but among other things, that war over there. So that's why the death of that dissident is more important than the death of innocent children. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. I have a bit of a problem with the wording more important, and I get thank you too. Um, so the question probably is not whether or not one or the other is more important. The question probably is more what matters more to us. Uh, the war in Yemen is complex, as our introduction showed. A massive coalition of Arab states is fighting on the ground and in the air. More than 50,000 children have died. And I'm not playing the numbers game here, but that has to stand for something. And it is a bit of a problem to my personal conscience that one person dying in a consulate was all over the news, whereas a year-long conflict where every involved party seemed to target civilians is not. So um, why do you think that the war is, should matter more to us and is therefore more important? A couple of things. First off, the dissident that has been butchered in that consulate, well, nothing changed. Trump even paddled back. Already he left the news cycle. And yet it's crazy. We were all fascinated and shocked by it. And still, you will see MBS, as he is called, will stay in power there are a couple of people that will go to jail or what have you over this. And the signal that probably should have uh, or MBS probably wanted to send has been sent. On the other hand, the war in Yemen as it is fought over right now is actually not possible to be fought without our own involvement. So the West has blood on its hands. Um, for instance, Germany, without Rammstein, no drone fights in Yemen. Uh, without the U.S. weapons, the Saudis cannot attack Yemen. Uh, without the, the, the tensions we have in Iran, the whole war uh, loses meaning. So I would say we have blood on our hands, which is why we look away, which is why we, we discuss 
a journalist and the threat to, to journalism, which is not going away. Saudi Arabia will keep jailing them and will keep killing them. And I, I kind of assume that if he could, Trump would jail journalists sometimes too. So um, this, is not, this is not helping. And therefore, I would say the war in Yemen is actually more important because we can do something about it. And it's tens of thousands of people that are dying because the West has a um, replacement war in Yemen with too many parties already. I do think the Yemeni children are more important than one dissident simply because we can change that. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. I agree with you. The importance term is important to define. And I agree with you also that it's it's what matters to us. What is the where are we going to put the weight on one topic versus another? Uh, and it's how much the media are going to talk about it. it. It's how outraged governments are going to be. You said, I quote, we can do something about the war in Yemen. The thing is, in the past four years, for various reasons, we have not. We don't change anything about Yemen. And for the reasons you mentioned, we have blood on our hands. It's our weapons, British, French, and US weapons. So the fact is, and it's and it's, it's hard to say, but I'll, I'll, I'll still say, because I still think it's true, The war in Yemen is officially against terrorists and, as you said, against Iran, a proxy war. It's actually more understandable than the murder of a journalist. What went to their minds? They could have just kidnapped the guy, put him in a jail in Saudi Arabia. It would have had no repercussion in the press it's, it's, except for a, one news article and that's it. It would have been forgotten. Just like, by the way, and we're going to talk about Trump if we want, but the inheritance and how uh, money from Trump was completely dismissed. Right. It's a massive news story. And within one or two days, nobody talked about it anymore. So I don't know what went into their minds. But my point here is that this has actually the, the war on, on Yemen has actually pushed the Yemenis further into Iran's arms. But my point here is it's just normal news, this war uh, in Yemen. It's the regular stuff that our democracies or so-called democracies are doing. They're doing war by proxy, and this is not really anything new for the news media. And whether it's the right thing or the wrong thing, I'm, I'm not going to touch on that, but I can understand. I can explain why this is happening. And my hope, and really this is my, my genuine hope, is that this killing of a journalist is a betrayal of trust between the Saudi regime, which kind of played along the, the rules of Western democracies when it comes to international rules and policies, is actually this, this killing is a betrayal of trust uh, between Saudi Arabia and the US and other Western countries. It may help. It may. I don't know if it will. Right? I'm, I'm going to be cautious here. It may help pressure Saudi Arabia to maybe into stopping the war because of all the mistakes of the crown prince, MBS. And if it does not, maybe it will, be, it will force us, us in the Western world, to be more suspicious of MBS, if anything, because we can see how ruthless that person can be. And it's when I say that person, it's because power in Saudi Arabia is absolute power. And it's not uh, a collegial power of princes. It's one guy, one king or one crown prince. Here's one more thing I want to highlight in terms of a key distinction. Killing those children, hopefully, and I don't know, but hopefully was not premedi premeditated. Uh, which they call it in, in warfare, this horrible term, collateral damage. Um, however horrible, it's important to stress the difference between involuntary murder and premed premeditated torture and manslaughter. And I think there's also another distinction here as to what deaths we're talking about. And that's why I think we could start counting the lives being taken by war or by murder. But I think this is a, a similar way to ignore what's really at stake. So this is why I really do think the death of that journalist is way more important. Or we should make a much more important case out of it uh, instead of the of children or innocent lives being taken as a result of war. And now on to Dirk. So I have a couple of observations to share. Number one, we already established the that journalist is already out of the media and nothing's going to follow from there. It's basically a criminal case if, you, if it comes down to it. It's a criminal case where the Saudi regime acted as the murderer and they killed in front of our eyes somebody who is a member of the journalism community. So yeah, uh, nothing going to follow from that and I do think we agree on this as well. Uh, the second thing is that we also established four years in Yemen war, nothing 
will change the behavior of the Saudis right now. So can we do anything about either of those two things? I would say probably not. And I'll tell you why. Uh, the US is fighting an economic war right now. So far, it's economic with Iran, which means Iran will not sell oil to them, which is why the US ha has to depend on Saudi Arabia making it cheap enough so oil prices don't explode. They try to rein them in, but it's really hard to rein them in if practically the whole world knows that uh, the US is dependent on Saudis right now. And that, that's just one point here. In the other situation, it's basically the world community being involved. So if we for a moment establish that the US is unlikely to do anything about it, we can. And we have the UN, we have uh, the involvement in Europe. We could, we could actually stand up to the values we keep preaching. We could stand up to that and we could actually do something about it. As I said, there are tens of thousands of people dying. That's the one thing that we can change. I don't think that the death of the journalist would change anything other than establishing Saudi Arabia as a brutal regime, which was established before. We, don't, we didn't have to have that death to know that. They're already torturing people and throwing them in jail. There is only a little step further than that. I do believe it's more important to look into the deaths in Yemen and, yeah, put that into the light and think hard about that and maybe start acting on that, simply because there's more chance that we really act on it, because there are more players involved, more people that actually should and can care. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. Elan was this little Syrian boy whose body was washed up on a Turkish beach in 2015. That was one boy, one story that galvanized global attention to the larger refugee crisis, which we're also talking about large numbers. So I, I really want to insist on how the psychological aspect of even if massive numbers of people die in the same circumstances, people experience a greater emotional reaction to the death of one person who dies, who who, who dies that way rather than many. So I, I really want to underscore the value of that story that we can that we build in our heads because it's one person. We can't neglect that aspect. And it's not just a murder case, the, the death of the, of the Saudi journalist. It's more than that. As I mentioned, I think it's fundamental attack on the freedom of press of also Saudis going outside of their country. So I, I think it's more than just a little step further away than just imprisoning a journalist when you go into torturing someone in a consulate in a foreign country. I do hope and I do think that the killing of one man, that Saudi journalist, will help act as a tipping point and will get the international community to crack down maybe on the Saudi regime or maybe contain it. And I don't have any hope whatsoever for the UN to do this. The UN, however, the idea is nice in theoretical terms, has been useless for the past 50 years um, of its operations. And before that, it was uh, what, the League of Nations, Society of Nations, can't remember the name. Anyway, so in conclusion, yes, the death of one Saudi dis dissident may actually be way more important than the death of countless numbers of Yemeni children. Dirk. I beg to differ. I do think, thanks to the UN, we had more security and more peace in the world than without it. And often the work of the UN is not as obvious as we would like it to have. I do, however, also think if you if you make a decision between which death is more important, as we do in our motion, we have to compare based on how many people are involved and which one is likely to inflict change. And this is where I disagree. I don't think that the death of the journalist, however brutal and sensational it was, will change anything. I do, however, believe that pressure on Saudi Arabia from the world community can change things. And there is an indefinite not higher number of people involved in Yemen and more people dying every day, 130 children each day. So I do think this is more important, as sad as that sounds, than the death of one journalist. And right now, no one pays attention. Even with the death journalist, people talked about that journalist and being killed in that embassy not about the war in Yemen, despite the fact that this is the more likely scenario to make a difference and the more important scenario in my book. I was wondering, uh, 
because I read so much about the topic, like just naturally, aside from the debate, I feel that as for other topics unrelated, I feel that we get like overwhelmed. At some point, you just like, you know, unplug from everything Saudi connect related. So I should worry that it's going to be the, the other way around. Like we already know so little or we care so little about Yemen that like, oh, it's the Saudis again. Like I, I'm not too sure that people will be interested. And it is an uh, unbelievable can of worms. If you look into the connection between the US and the Saudis and the rest of the West and the Saudis, it's just unbelievable. And uh, I mean, it's the massive amount of money that flows to the country and back, especially between the US and uh, Saudi, pretty much guarantees that they can get away with a lot. Yeah, they get away with murder. They get away with uh, tens of thousands of deaths. Basically, there is a war being fought in Yemen that includes civil deaths. And they, they, they attacked two times. They attacked uh, hospitals of, uh, of doctors with their borders. This is something that basically even uh, th there are plenty of wars fought on this planet. And that was not collateral damage, do you think? Well, or, they, well from what you read? They more, they more or less kind of uh, took that into account. They might, might as well hit a uh, hospital. I would say they don't care. And if you, if you have an, uh, a, uh, if you have weapon systems that come from the U.S. and are high tech and operated by by U.S. professionals, I'm sorry. Either we do have high tech weapons delivered to the Saudis, and they can basically use good judgment in who they attack, or they just don't care. That's what I, I get from reading all these articles. They don't care. They just fight that war no matter who dies in it and aside from uh, killing people directly through weapon they are on the brink of famine there are people dying because they don't have enough to eat right now so it's also they are not allowing humanitarian help either so how much how much war crime do we allow a country if it's rich enough to get away with i guess maybe the one thing we did not talk about in terms of who's going to benefit from that story overall of everything is maybe turkey Turkey yeah, is, is very, very smart clever, right, right? The way yeah. they've distilled and leaked the information gradually over the past number of weeks, and they've probably not done with it, trying to undermine Saudi Arabia as the regional power country in the in the in that part of the globe. So maybe out of all this, is just Turkey which is going to come out slightly on top uh, of the situation, and everything is just going to be the same. The war is going to continue. Saudis are just going to do whatever they want because they have enough. Petrol for now, enough money to control things a little bit. Yeah, this is this is something that these years teach us, right? That if you have enough money, you get away with everything. It's like, uh, I mean, uh, what you said. Well, it's, it's more than money, right? Maybe I was simplistic because it's also what you mentioned about containing Iran, right? This obsession from the US because it is an obsession. We don't have in Europe, when I say we in Europe, France, I, I don't know about Germany, but I think it's similar in terms of the EU stance. We're not that obsessed with Iran. We don't perceive them as enemies of yeah. the rest of the world, uh, to the rest of the world as much as the US does. In fact, you know, our companies are always upset when the US sanctions Iran because our companies in Germany and France do want to actually trade with Iran. But because they trade in US dollars, they can't do that. Right? So um, it's, it's more than just money. Right? I, I was being simplistic, but to your point earlier, you were saying how Saudi Arabia also being at this staunch and, and strong ally of Western democracies against Iran is another reason, not just the money aspect. In fact, the petrol aspect is is less important for the US than it was 10 years ago. I don't know if you know, but the US dependency on Saudi, Saudi oil has diminished over the years. And in fact, the real, re, the real risk that the US has is not an expensive petrol. It's actually a cheap uh, uh, petrol. And the reason for that, if it's too cheap, they can't exploit their own petrol here in the US because it becomes too expensive. They need to shut down their whatever, various oil fields in the US. So they need actually an expensive uh, oil barrel. But on the other hand, um, the Saudis agreed on, um, on lowering the price right now. So why is that then? But, it, but they're not flooding the market. The petrol, I think, right now is around 60 to $70 a barrel, uh, which is a mid-level uh, number. The, when, it, when I say cheap, it's $30 a barrel. They could flood the market. There's so much petrol that the prices go down. That's that's a threat that the Saudis can use. I don't know if they've used it you know, explicitly or not, but that's what they could do right, to pressure the, the, the U.S. Except the U.S. in theory is less dependent on Saudi, Saudi oil. They can they can more easily contain it. It's more damaging to the rest of the world, to the other economies, and that's which probably, probably is the risk that they run because they depend on infrastructure 
practically all over the world say, for everything. When you say they, huh? For the Saudis. No, for the U.S. Yeah, the, the, the U.S. Exactly, exactly. The I mean, U.S. Not, has it, global operations. It, they depend on exactly, the U. and everything. Exactly, it's not just the U.S. in isolation, right? If the world economy yeah. stops, well, they're in trouble too. Every, every, everything's connected. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, it is also, and th that's probably also an aspect we didn't touch on. Um, the the U.S. depends on Saudi intelligence quite a bit when it comes to uh, knowing what Pakistan is doing, Iran is doing, and what have you. So. There is a lot of connection there that we have no chance to really understand. We are not experts in the field, but it's it's just ridiculous if you if you see the screaming, kicking, and discussing and uh, and, and and claims that we're flying around in the news as if anything would change because there is one guy being killed in an embassy. I just don't believe it. I I would want things to change, but I, I, I'm Me more too. optimistic that things would change because of that than a UN intervention. But we can have another debate on this. Is the UN any of, of any use? Excuse me. Is the UN is the UN of any use today? Especially when you have countries like China or Russia and the Security Council, which systematically block any what I would say common sense mm -hmm. uh, emotions yeah. to go and intervene in Syria, to go and intervene in various parts okay, of the that, planet. That is that is basically the core argument that I'm making. Is basically that's the big level later, right? If you say, "Hey, the 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 killed guy in the in the consulate is not changing anything," and we know that the Saudis are just doing whatever they they want to do, if that is the common denominator, then it comes down to civilians being killed all over and basically being a a insult on everything we claim to have in terms of values and one guy being criminally killed so which one is more important i would rather say let's focus on on the things that we can influence the things we are guilty of the things we can actually change and yes we could change for instance when the the german government has been formed last year they wrote coalition contract and in that contract they say they want to stop sending or selling weapons to parties involved in the Yemen war. Well, they didn't give a list of those countries and of course they don't mean the US with that. But what would that be as a statement if you basically would turn around and say, listen, you are involved in the Yemen war, we don't support that anymore, so shut down your operations with regards to Yemen on, on our ground. And no, we are not uh, supporting you with weapons and anything. It, for the US, it basically doesn't matter if we, if we don't sell them the trucks they are driving around with, but it would be, send a signal and others would follow. I'm pretty sure that, the, that, that France would come reconsider the uk would reconsider i i do think the fact that we are directly involved in that war makes it more important whereas yeah a brutal murderous regime is killing one person here and fifty thousand there that just that's the same it's not the same level but it's basically the same thing it's just it's a brutal murderous regime doing whatever they please to do no you, you have a good point i i maintain that i think the the narrative or the story that you can build and weave around this horrendous murder uh, can actually go a longer way. But you have a point. We should care more about we should famine. The main problem is nobody cares of uh, either one of those stories in two weeks from now. Possibly. possibly. Yeah, I, I think I may be more cynical uh, yeah. on, on, on this aspect. All right. That's it for today's debate. Thank you for listening, as always. Uh, you are more and more numerous to listen to us, so we can't be more thankful. It makes us uh, do our little happy dance once in a while. Doug, you're an expert of that. Yeah, you can I'm see this in the teaser videos. Time I see the statistics. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for listening. Don't hesitate to let us know what you thought. Uh, you can also vote directly on the on the website to debate.eu, and you can put a thumbs up, thumbs down to see who of Doug or I convinced you the most. And uh, stay tuned for our next debate. Any parting words? Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.